Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. A shoplifting call at Shields All Sports on 45th Street in Fargo earlier tonight ended in a drug bust at Casey's Convenience Store in South Fargo about an hour ago. Fargo Police and Cass County Sheriff's deputies responded to Casey's on South University Drive about 8.15 tonight. Officers used a drug dog to search a white Chrysler 300. They arrested a man on charges of possessing meth, marijuana, and drug paraphernalia, along with reckless driving and fleeing police. Officers say the man fled from them initially at Shields when they arrived to check out the shoplifting charge around 6.30 this evening. When there was the bus taking place, two other passengers were in the vehicle. They were not charged. Now, no names have been released. Look for updates on this story here on Valley News Live and on valleynewslive.com. In total, um, 3.5 million really um, available for the three complexes. The dust has barely settled on West Fargo's most recent bond referendum, and there's already been a change with the most contentious issue. More than 60% of the voters approved spending nearly $107 million to pay for a new high school and other projects aimed at easing continued overcrowding in the district. Valley News Team's Katie Opperly is here with the latest on money being spent for turf. Katie? Mike, Andrea, leading up to this last month's vote, the majority of opposition centered on the cost of synthetic turf. Many living in West Fargo expressed their concern with $3 million from the referendum being spent on the installation of synthetic turf at the West Fargo, Cheyenne, and the new school. During tonight's board meeting discussion, the cost of that portion of the project went up. The district's business manager, Mark Lemmer, said the artificial turf for Cheyenne High School and West Fargo could go in as early as next summer. He broke down the budget in large chunks, saying $2.4 million would go toward existing schools with $6,000 for the new high school. He then said in the new high school's budget, an additional half million dollars will go towards underground or earthwork, bringing the total cost to $3.5 million. So overall, all of it was included in the 106.9 million, just kind of allocated into a couple of different buckets. So what he's saying is the additional cost involves dirt work that is already in the projected cost for the new high school. Almost a shell game as the big dollar project moves forward. The, the board approved the idea unanimously. Also tonight, the board approved the hiring of civil engineers for the design work of the turf project in all three schools. They are expected to begin over the next couple weeks. So Katie, the uh, documents uh, as totaled are 2.4 million, 600,000, and an additional 500,000, bringing the total to 3.5 million. Thanks. The actual construction of the turf project is expected to begin this coming spring. It's said uh, to be too early on the project to tell if any further specifics are meant for the design. Temps are falling and it's going to be chilly late October this evening. Let's find out what that will mean for your Tuesday morning commute to work or school. Hutch? Yeah, we are looking very cold tonight thanks to our clear skies. The wind finally, however, has, well, it's settled down. A, a few clouds up near the Lake of the Woods area holding temperatures at bay near 40 there at this hour. 37 in Bemidji, already 25 degrees in Grand Forks, 31 Fargo, Moorhead, and 36 in Fergus Falls. As we go through the overnight, all of us will dip down into the 20s with wind chill values close to 20 degrees. So a frosty start to the day. Bundle up. I'll have details on sunshine and rain in the extended forecast here in just a couple of moments. All right. Moments. Thank, thank you, Hutch. Yeah. A Fargo College student reached out to our whistleblower hotline after she says she was promised a good paying job with flexible hours. It turned out to be a scam. Mona Parker said that she searched for jobs using the site Indeed, getting a position with Agrimed as an assistant for a man named Bruce Goldman. Parker says she received a contract and got a $5,000 check in the mail from her supposed boss. But before she cashed that hefty check, she wanted to make sure she wasn't being scammed. She emailed the Bruce Goldman listed on the Agrimed website. You hired me as an assistant and I still haven't met you. Just wondering if this opportunity is actually real. And he emails us back within like 30 minutes. And he said, sorry, it's not me. I was like, oh, okay. We reached out to Indeed today and they say everything posted on their site is reviewed first, but they say sometimes the process is delayed. 
We also reached out to AgriMed. They did not get back to us. A West Fargo family finally has their money back after being ripped off. They had hired a contractor to put up a building on their property, but told us he took off with their money and nothing was done. So they called our whistleblower hotline. And tonight we have the happy ending they were hoping for all along. Matt and Mandy Sterlockson hired Matt Lano, a contractor from Lemoore, to put a building in their yard. They did all their research and homework on his business, Dakota Pole Buildings Incorporated. So they put down a $20,000 dollar deposit but they say he never started the project fast forward several months and that brings us to today the Sterlocksons just got a check from Lano and his company this is something that you can do yourself um, and if you ever find yourself in that situation take some time educate yourself so how did this happen? Well, they got a hold of the North Dakota Attorney General, but they weren't having much luck there. So they had to do their own digging and work. They filed a criminal complaint with local authorities and got in contact with the Cass County State's Attorney. Lano and his company are now facing felony charges. A leaked draft memo obtained by the New York Times suggests the Trump administration is considering redefining the word gender. It's news that has sparked outrage and action in the LGBTQ community. Erica Edwards reports. Demonstrators raising flags and voices. Stand up, my back. After a new report says the Trump administration is considering narrowly defining gender as male or female based on genitalia at birth, rolling back a more broad definition under President Obama. The New York Times says it obtained the draft memo, which NBC News has not seen, describing the move as the most drastic yet to eliminate rights for transgender Americans. The LGBTQ advocates who came to protest in front of the White House today have a message for President Trump. We will not be erased. If implemented, the new definition could hit hardest in places protected by federal anti-discrimination laws, like schools. Rafi Friedman Gerspan was the first openly transgender appointee in the Obama White House. This, it just flies in the face of conventional uh, wisdom and is really an attack on a small minority of people who just want to be um, respected and, and protected by the rule of law. During his campaign, then-candidate Trump promised protection. Now? But what about your promise to protect the LGBTQ I'm community? protecting everybody. HHS is citing a 2016 federal court ruling on discrimination that describes sex as separate from gender identity. Still, it's not clear whether the agency will move forward with the more restrictive definition. The new gender definition could be presented to the Justice Department by the end of the year. New polling shows Kevin Kramer has opened a sizable lead over Heidi Heitkamp in the race for North Dakota U.S. Senate. The exclusive poll by Valley News Live and Strategic Research Associates included 650 likely voters in North Dakota and was conducted between October 12th and the 19th. The Republican challenger leads the incumbent Democratic senator 56 percent to 40 percent, increasing his lead since our September poll in which Kramer held a 10-point advantage. James Henson is a Ph.D. who works with the research firm that conducted the poll. Henson says Senator Heitkamp appears to have been heard by her vote against Brett Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh's confirmation to the U.S. Supreme Court, as well as by subsequent campaign missteps widely covered in the media. In the race for North Dakota's seat in Congress, Republican Kelly Armstrong leads Democrat Mark Schneider 56 percent to 35 percent, with 9 percent undecided. Our poll was conducted by Strategic Research Associates, LLC, based in Austin, Texas. Respondents were contacted by live interviewers, with 50% of the calls completed on a landline telephone, 50% completed over a cell phone. The margin of error for the complete sample is as little as less at 4% points and higher margins of error for any subgroup. Now, we have more numbers tied to these races. You can find them on our website. Go to valleynewslive.com. In Minnesota, a new poll finds Democrats Amy Klobuchar and Tina Smith leading their Republican challengers in their races for the U.S. Senate, with Smith locked in a much tighter race in a special election. The latest Minnesota Public Radio News Star Tribune poll shows Smith leading Republican nominee Karen Housley 47 percent to 41 percent in the race for her Senate seat. Housley gained one percentage point since the last poll in September, with 10 percent still undecided, 2 percent voting for another candidate. The race could swing either way on November 6th. 
As for Klobuchar, she leads her Republican opponent, Jim Newberger, 56 percent to 33 percent, with 7 percent undecided. The poll of 800 likely voters from October 15th through the 17th has an error margin of plus or minus 3.5 percentage points. Road fatalities in Minnesota have reached 302 this year. That compares with 285 last year at this time. The Department of Public Safety indicates that alcohol, speed, and neglecting to wear a seatbelt were among the most common factors contributing to the deaths. The data also shows 72 percent of those who died were male, and most people killed were in the 21 to 30 age range. Extra DWI enforcement on holidays and weekends, that begins November 21st. It runs through December 29th. Drunk driving related crashes contributed to 72 deaths on Minnesota roads in 2017. Later on Valley News Live at 10, more information is trickling in on the Bison and Butler football game next year. There's a new date and some, some ticket information. Mid 50s this afternoon in Fargo. Grand Forks a little cooler, but still some sunshine on a gusty start to the work week. It does look like we'll see more sunshine, but rain in the forecast as well. Details are right up next.